one meeting of the select board to order it. Yeah, it up to 6.30. Um, glad folks are here. There hasn't been anyone that's asked for public comment. Is there anybody online that you can see, Ron? That... Yes, I'll go over that. Okay. Participants on virtual is Christine Halquist, Lisa Ryan, uh, Preservation Trust, Matthew Schoen, Liz Courtney, Fremont Access is on, Lynette Clauden, Dave Gagne, and Unidentified Caller One. Not sure who that is. <laughs> so if, if Greenmount Access is listening, uh, did you need us to turn the monitor on so you can broadcast the talking people? Or something eventually, right? Yeah. Okay, let's start with the uh, first of it's it's, uh, it's liquor license time of year. Susan. Susan. What? Yeah. Susan, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I, I want to apologize to you and the rest of the board. I planned on being there tonight, but I've been in the ditch all day playing conduit. So I'm kind of bush tonight. So I'll just... yeah, I can't say why. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, perfect. And, and this is where, again, I think long term having this ability to call in for a whole variety of reasons. You can have somebody sit at home, you can, again, this audio. And I, I think it will be um, easier for a lot of folks to participate if you don't have the whole topic. Dave, Dave, you're a little staticky tonight. Oh, he's static yeah. a lot of <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, right. So what we need is, uh, right, we've got the uh, third class liquor license on that 76 uh, spirits for pork and dental that we need to approve. So. Second. Okay. Any questions? Any concerns? No. Okay. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Um, next, I know we've got Lisa here. The uh, the fifty five fifty thousand dollar window grant with the with the pres preservation trust. So we'll see if if um, we want to, somebody want to Courtney want to. Want to introduce Lisa? You want to jump right in? You want to make sure Dave can hear? All right, yes, I can just make a quick intro. Um, so, folks in the room who can't see me, this is Liz Courtney, and I'm the, the secretary of the Gaihan Valley Hall Committee. And I asked Lisa from Preservation Trust to join us um, just to answer any lingering questions about the grant that we have been awarded from the Preservation Trust to help restore the original windows at the Gaihan Valley Hall. Um, and part of agreeing to accept that grant means entering in to a 15 year um, easement with the Preservation Trust that will have some guidelines and some limitations to how we impact mainly the facade of the building to make sure that it's meeting historic standards. So Lisa's here to to answer any questions about what that really means in practice. Um, Dave, I know you had some questions and, and we've we've talked a little bit about this, but this is just a chance for everybody on the select board to ask any questions because the next step will be um, just getting a signature on the contract so that we can move forward with um, hiring the contractor who will help us do the work. Okay. So I guess I'll pass it to Dave or whomever on the select board had specific questions for Lisa. 
Okay, th 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 this is my biggest uh, uh, question. This is a uh, th that I ran to in the past that, uh, <clears throat> and I think Ron can uh, attest to this a little bit on the baseball field, that we took some federal money, some grant money. Uh, now, if we took that grant money, <clears throat> some of the people in Hyde Park think that it's a good it's a good idea up North High Park. Some people think it is a, a money pit, as as you have in the last town town meetings. My question is: Is the town of High Park accept that grant, and the taxpayers of the town of High Park say, "Okay, no more"? Can we sell that building, or does it have to remain in the Preservation, as some buildings do. That's a great question. And just before I jump in, I just want to say hi to everybody, but also let you know Matt Schoen, who's also on the call. Matt is with Preservation Trust as well. He's an intern with us, and he's been working with us on National Register nominations and baseline documentation for the easement. So I invited Matt to come tonight. I hope that's okay. Um, just to have the experience of participating in one of these public meetings. So um, sure. thanks for having me and thanks for having both of us. So um, David, I think that's a great question. And to be honest with you, I, I'll go through our grant agreement and, and look to see what kind of language we have about that. Generally speaking, with these grants, they're, they're intended for public buildings. So buildings that are either owned by municipalities or by nonprofits. Um, and sometimes grants will have a period in there, um, like, you know, around change of use, for example. So if public money is invested in a project and then someone um, sells it to a, a non-public entity, like a private property owner, sometimes there are, are clauses in the grant agreements that say that there needs to be some sort of repayment. But I, I haven't looked in our grant agreement enough to know if there's any kind of clause like that. Some of the clauses, are like a five-year period, right? So maybe there's for a period of five years, you can't sell the building. Or there, if there is a change of use, from example, from a public building to a private building. But I will look at our grant agreement and um, we'll call Marla if I can't. Marla is our connection at the Park Service and we'll talk that through with her. Um, if it was something like the town was donating it to the guy on Valley Hall, Friends of Guyon Valley, or if it was going to a nonprofit entity, I think it's very safe to say that even if there was something in there, um, that that it wouldn't be an issue because the grant, the term of the agreement would would transfer with the property ownership. I just don't know if it goes to a private property owner what that looks like or means. So I'll, I'll check that out for you. But that's a great question. Okay, thank you. And, and the other yeah. question I, I had was when we talk on the phone yep uh, to me preservation means to preserve so if, if that ceiling up in and i'm just using the ceiling and i don't really know what it is actually but if that ceiling was that stained steel that the, the, the buildings in the 1800s were built with you know what i'm talking about yeah, are you talking about, so I have some pictures from the interior. Is this the, the metal, the, the kind of corrugated metal in the hallway? Or are you talking about the plaster ceiling upstairs? I'm just kind of um, wanting a little clarification. No, I, I just, I'm, I'm right now, I think I'm just uh, using that for an, an example. That, oh, that okay. the, the, these old, older buildings for ceiling, they, they had that stamped steel or stamped aluminum. Now, to preserve something means to me is to preserve that ceiling. Now, we need a new ceiling up there. Do we have to put it back the way it was built or can we do this new modern drop ceiling? And would that be within the ramification of this grant? Right. So as Liz said, you know, the covenant is a 15 year period, right? So that's that's the National Park Service put that out there as the period of time that if you accept the money from the Park Service, it, it has this covenant. 
And the covenant usually, well, the covenant will cover exterior features. So it will definitely cover your facade. And sometimes the covenant will, will cover some interior features if they're, if they're deemed significant. So for example, I know in your building, you've got a drop ceiling already in the downstairs level. Is that, is that right? Is the downstairs that has a drop ceiling? Yeah. That's so that's already been, that's already there. So that, that would not be part of like an easement where it said like, you have to preserve this. Like if you were going to change that out and you wanted to do something else, um, you know, the hallway, I think we would look at that. I've seen pictures of it. It doesn't appear to me to be um, a particularly significant feature of the, of the, like the metal on the ceiling. Um, and I know there's some fire safety things that you have to address with that hallway. So, you know, we would work with you to come up with a, a, a way of addressing that because for us, the priority is the use of the building. Um, there's a stage upstairs, which, and I think there's like a, what we call a barrel ceiling with the plaster and sort of the curved walls. You know, that may be something that would be something that we would want to see you, you know, apply for grants and, and restore. But what I was going to say is I, I chatted with our um, easement coordinator today. So we have 111 easements and these are perpetual easements, right? These are easements that stay with the property forever and they transfer from owner to owner. What we're talking about for your property is it's a 15 year window. So it's a little bit less, um, you know, it's definitely less time. And then um, what we would say is that if you have concerns about that, what we could do is we could work with you to come out and to determine ahead of time before we before you start spending the money or maybe even before you sign the grant agreement, what types of things would be covered under the easement? And if there are things that would be covered under the easement, what would be acceptable um, um, treatments for that, right? Because we always work with groups to try to find the best possible solution for these buildings. And, and yes, these are grants that are aimed at preserving the historic buildings, we're really more focused on keeping them useful and like preservation in the sense that we want communities to be able to use these buildings and we want them to be comfortable and safe for people to use. And we recognize that things like fire safety and energy efficiency all play a part of that. So if, um, if it would be helpful, we could, we could try to predetermine the things that you are anticipating in the next 15 years as, as something you would want to work on and then we could actually include that in in the covenant when it's written. So if you, for example, want, if you think you're going to need to replace acoustical panels in the drop ceiling downstairs, um, we can write into the to the covenant that that you can replace those in kind, and that we're not going to require you to do something other. Or, you know, if you know that you're going to be doing some insulating, we could um, determine what kinds of insulation would be a good fit for your building at your location and we could pre-approve that and write it into the covenant so that when even if it's 10 years from now and and maybe the select board has changed there will be something in writing that says this was a, this was agreed upon at the time of entering into this grant agreement and um and that way it's it's kind of a, a little bit of a known 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 um entity known document so I mean, because it's, you know, and Dave, I wish I could be more, um, you know, sometimes these things people are like, well, is it this or is it that? And like, it's just, it's such a uh, nuanced kind of a field where it's like, well, we try to like look at each of these buildings at, as an individual building. We look at each community, we look at each, you know, building in terms of its use. And so we really just want to be as flexible as we can be. Um, also recognizing that we kind of have this parameter we have to work within because we're we're really the stewards of this money from the park service so um but we're happy to work with you if that if that's something that would that would be desirable and i think what you're suggesting is really helpful lisa because we do have the committee has put together not quite a 15-year plan but maybe something resembling like a five-year plan of different renovation mm -hmm. projects that we want to prioritize 
So we could certainly help build that into the contract. Yeah, that that's something you know we would be happy to do, and I could talk with our our easement coordinator. Um, and again, you know, she's used to these sort of perpetual easements where we're looking at like, you know, a long, long time. <laughs> Perpetuity is a long time. But you know, with this one, we we recognize this is a 15 year period, and there may be things after 15 years. There may be new building materials. There may be new um, technologies that are out there that would be helpful for you all. To, I mean, I, I, I'm always amazed that just like the, the technology is advancing around heating and cooling systems. Whoops. The second. Are there other questions? Dave, how's that sound to you? Do we have Dave? Dave, muted. Oh, I had this on mute. You, you, you know what? I, I don't want to be negative. Be negative. Uh, uh, but my only yeah, concern my only is the taxpayers in high tax. Just don't want to put them in the position where they're where they're locked into something that they really didn't know about. So if you could come up with those ramifications of what they could be and work with Liz on it, I, I think that'd be good. I can, I can do that. Yes. Would, would the next step then be for me to share with Lisa our um, facilities improvement plan so you can see the specific projects that are on the horizon? Yes, and, and, and what I would like from her is also to have her check in and see if that building could be sold to a private entity other than, than going to a, another town or, or municipality, if we accept that grant money. Well, I think, Steve, are you, are you thinking, um, like could like a private property owner versus something like the um, Friends of Zion Valley? Are you thinking like a for-profit entity? Is that what you're wondering? No, I, I'm wondering if, if the taxpayers of High Park says, okay, we had enough. We don't put no more money into the building. So what are we going to do with it? And if, we, if the town of High Park had a chance to sell it to a private entity, could we do it after accepting grant money? Uh, did it, did it, did it, did it, yeah. Seventeen five was the second one. Quite a bit of feedback, but I. If I'm understanding what my next step will be is to find out if the high park can sell to a private property owner if they accept grant money and also to work with Liz to get sort of the, the plan. And then I will arrange a time for myself, our evening coordinator, and Matt out to the site and we can try to pre determine the uh, that will be covered under the current Is anybody else having trouble hearing? Yeah, there's a bad I heard, I heard. It's coming with that report to the federal government about the folks. Yeah, that's a good one. Better. Much better. Yeah. <laughs> so Liz, does that sound does that sound like a good plan to you, Liz, as well? Yeah, absolutely. And that makes that makes me feel more comfortable too, knowing that we've already discussed some of these projects that are on the horizon and that we have clear guidelines for, you know, yes, this is completely in the clear, or this, yes, but you need to consider X, Y, and Z. And that'll include Dave the ceiling, which is 
the next project that we want to work on next year. And we've already identified some possible fundraising strategies for that with, um, you know, grants and um, uh, tax incentives for uh, village centers. So it'd be good to have that baked into the plan. Terrific, that'll be fun. Any other questions from folks? I'll try it. Not work. I think that there's too many mics in the actual Hyde Park office. <laughs> Does anyone want to type a question into the chat or do people feel comfortable with that or that that uh, the next steps that we have? Ron, what are you guys saying? We can see your mouth moving, but we can't hear you. Ron looks like he's typing. Is that, Is that a question? question? <laughs> uh -huh. Does it work if you just unmute the office or Ron's computer? So I'm going to ask, a, uh, I'll just ask a clarifying question and you can just kind of nod or say, yeah, yeah, shake your head yes or no, but are you asking, can the town, so if it's town owned, can the town charge rent for the building? Is that what you're asking or is the deed, are you asking if it's restricted to community use only? I, I'm just kind of wondering, um, and you could type it in, I mean, I, yeah, just if you could click, if you could just provide a little more information about your question. Lisa, who are you asking? I'm just asking Ron if he can clarify his question. I, can you hear me now? Okay, now I can. I can hear you when you yeah. talk with just the Hyde Park office mic on. Do you want to ask your question? So I can't wait. I think we figured it out. I think, I think you guys can be heard now. We can't be heard now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shake your head. Okay. Shake your head. Okay. Shake your head. Okay. I'm giving you feedback and don't turn yours off. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna... that's that's the next step. Oh, that's okay, so and Dave, and so you can hear this too. Part of the covenants on the deed of the property is it can only be used for public use. Okay, that's something the the property's already locked into. It can't be sold. Okay. No, no, uh, well. Um, or, or 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 a profit sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. So who, who's speaking? Okay. So there's there is already before preservation trust is involved a significant 
um, lock on the property and what we can do with it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. And we can look, you know, we can talk more when, when I'm there in person too. We can look at some of those pieces. And again, you know, a lot of public buildings have some sort of restricted, oftentimes have something way back in the deed that says if it's no longer going to be used as this and we want it to be donated to some other entity and that's not uncommon at all with with a lot of these buildings um the state you know the state department of historic preservation has been has found out many times that someone writes into the deed that if it's not going to be used as the whatever hall anymore that they want it donated to the state and the state definitely does not want any more buildings so oftentimes they work to find another public entity to to take it over and um, okay okay but again but, i'm gonna ask the question anyway about the, the transfer to private ownership just because it'd be good to know even if it doesn't apply to this building i'll still try to find out an answer to that question right and we'll all know <laughs> yeah okay exactly so so it sounds like between the technological lips and bips here that you guys have a plan. You're going to see what their sort of five-year plan is, and then it'll be then every, including everyone involved in it, will know that sort of here's what the and again realizing there's flexibility in the process, but there's a, um, at least some sort of broad parameters as to what they can expect to need to do and comply with on the on the major projects that they're thinking about for the next five years. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And you know, it's one of those things where it's like, we know what we know now with what exists, but you know, things like I was saying before is that there's technologies and new building materials and, and the national park service is oftentimes reviewing its guidelines. So, you know, we can do our best to write in now what we know. And then if some other really amazing product product or solution or technique develops between now and the time when you do your project, there'll be a chance to discuss that because we may say, sure, why don't you, you can go ahead and do this, this or that. But if there's some other great insulation, for example, that's available five years from now that wasn't before, you may decide you want to go with something different. So it's not, this is not going to lock you in, but it will try to help provide some guidelines and parameters that you all could feel comfortable with going forward and then you know it's what i say to people is that when you enter into this covenant or into an easement you're basically kind of like it's like entering into a relationship with us where what we're really here to do is to help provide the best technical assistance we can to be um so that you can be the best steward you can be of these buildings and so that you're really making the best use of the public money because we know you all invest a ton of time and energy and fun and funding into these projects and so we just want to help to be sure that whatever's invested is going to be a good long-term solution for the building so okay the other question is <laughs> we've been trying to get this thing signed for a long time what kind of timeline are are we on and we have another meeting the 21st of june right ron yes is that the right date so how about if we get yeah. to closure by the 21st of this month? Uh, we'll try. That's kind of uh, to coordinate people coming out and to be able to develop the parameters of an easement by the 21st are probably, it's probably ambitious. I don't think that's going to happen. I would, think, I would think the biggest question, Dave, tell me if I'm right, but with Dave is a concern is if, uh, if the town decides if the, if the very enthusiastic energetic group in Hyde in North Hyde Park suddenly all move to uh, to uh, Oregon <laughs> and there's no interest in the building and here it is and suddenly there's this partially done um, it, it seems to me we already have I don't I don't think we can sell it but uh, but it just will be interesting to know depending if we got through that and we had accepted money um, would it be possible to transfer ownership to a private individual who might come in and and uh, with all the historic stuff still in place, but have the money and the energy to be able to complete it? I think that's sort of what we're looking for. Okay. Well, I will. I could probably get the answer to that one quicker than I can get yeah. the 
um, the information about the the easement or the covenant, but um, let me see what I can find out about that in time for your next meeting. And then with the other, um, let's shoot for July, like your second July meeting to have, I'll, I'll, let me, before I even say that, let me talk to our easement coordinator because I, I really have to coordinate it with her and find out her availability. But, you know, as far as the grant goes, we have three years for this grant. And so, um, you know, I, I think we have a, a broad enough timeline that we can take our time to address these questions. I don't want anyone to feel rushed or pressured. I just want to make sure that you all feel like, you know, this is the right thing for your community. So um, we'll just keep it moving forward. And I'll, I'll email Marla as soon as we get off the phone about the question about transfer of ownership and see what I can find out. And then um, I'll get back to you by the end of the week about timing on potentially coming up to look at the building and, and talking about the covenant. Super. Thank, thank you for your time and energy and tolerance it, it, uh, with, with this as we plug along through it. You good, Liz? Dave, you guys okay? Yeah, thanks, Lisa. Yes, thank yeah, you, you bet. Thank you all. For, thank you all for asking such thoughtful questions. It's helpful for us too, because we, you know, we like to, we, we, never, we, we never know what's going to come up. So it's always good to learn more about what, what communities are concerned about. So thanks so much for your time tonight, everyone. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, Bye everyone. Uh, and now for an abrupt change of pace, we'll go to the center road paving. Um, we got the $175,000 class two paving grant for the 3.2 miles of the center road. And now we need to vote to accept it and to assign somebody to sign and process all the paperwork. No, it'll, it'll, if anybody else calls up, see we're up in the corner. There's nobody else taught there. See, there's Dave. So, Dave is always. Dave, I'm going to mute you. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. So it's like you have a fan or something nearby that we're picking up. Oh, okay. Now he's going to talk. Okay. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta unmute. Got okay. You gotta do it. Can you unmute, Dave? There you go. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. There we go. We got gotcha. you. Yep. Uh, I guess this has something to do with the pavement. There is definitely something wrong with that culvert by the four corners. Um, they, they, they have come in and smoothed that out three different times, and it still sinks. Either, either that culvert is collapsing or the ring on the culvert is broke or something. But before we get in paving and and uh, that happens where we have a, like a bump in the road and it gets, somebody's got to get a culvert up and take a look what happens. Over. And I, th I think I should be on per se because no other culvert on the road has done that but that one. And it does it in just one section. And I think the chassis is there. I think I can see her. I think she can attest to that one hole that keeps showing up there. So, didn't they come and fix it? Didn't they do somewhere? Yeah, wasn't they did it once at least. I yeah, twice. And and they came to fix it uh, uh, about a week ago, and it is still caved in. It's caved in even more. So so that is going someplace. That's telling me that culvert is is getting crushed. And I just don't want to put I just don't want to put good pavement over it just to see it dug up and yeah. passed. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to get up there and take a look at it, Dave, too. Oh, okay. So obviously Ron, if you get Mark on that too, we'll see what's all right. So okay. However, you, no, you're here. You're right. That's that's right. That goes with it. But we need a motion to. I, I assume we want to accept the money. <laughs> okay. So I need a motion to accept the hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. So moved. And second. Um, and who wants to sign the papers? I get all, I get all the fun. Woo 
Let me, let me just all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Well, the paving definitely, definitely better not start before they get the culvert. Right. Brian? No. Good. Okay. We give a little time to look into that, Dave, <clears throat> before they start moving on the pavement. Yeah, because I'd like to get it. Uh, they did get back up. I like a little bit of time on it to pound it down so it doesn't doesn't sink. Go on, let me get right down in there and take a look. Okay. The one right the four corners. Going up towards Howard. Okay. When I when I go up, Dave, I'll try to give you a holler ahead of time, see if you're available. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll go with you. Okay. I think that's the one that has not been captured. Left there. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, the uh, the law enforcement study group. How's that going? <laughs> you know, you don't want to talk about in grass. I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> um, it it's. It's interesting, sort of the the folks that have been have been left over. We, actually, we had a, we had a couple of good conversations, and um, and uh, Walcott is just wanting to look at their alternatives, which is, you know, we all agree if if they, you know, if it does, um, I, the long and the short of it is, everybody wants more service for less money. And people are having um, are having different degrees of getting to dealing with that reality. We have um, and and um, and agreed that what is sort of interesting and and actually, if you go in the in the paper this week, there was a great like an op ed from Roger Marcou just talking about all the things that the sheriff's office does that most people are not aware of. And we realize that if you ask the public, you know, what do you want from, you know, from from law enforcement, um, they want them to stop speeders, um, and they want if they think drugs are being sold, they want those people, you know, arrested right then. The fact that the work's going into and arresting the folks that are doing the little dealing isn't who isn't isn't going to solve the issue that you need to work, and 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 so part of it was, is that. We thought maybe too as select boards we need to do a better job of letting folks know all the services you actually do get from the from the sheriff's department and and we've been talking to Roger about that for a while so I was glad to see the the thing in the uh, his piece in the in the paper it's um, it's also we realized that that a significant issue that that the sheriff's department has is this whole retirement issue which has been an issue. I, ever since Roger became the sheriff. Well, even before Gardner. Yeah, yeah even, right, even when Gardner was there. Right. And, and, and so when Roger came on, he made a choice. And now, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah, it has, yeah. Um, so the, the, the three towns have agreed and I'm doing, I'm, well, just, I'm doing some homework on this part of it. Trying to go the legislative process isn't going to work. We've it, it just doesn't work because all the years I was down there, we were trying to deal deal with, and there's a there's just a real discrepancy. And recently, the Washington County Sheriff was let into the group that Roger wants to get wants to get into, but the treasurer won't let Roger in. So anyway, we're go, we're going to work to on uh, on on that. Um, it's coming up with the. Uh, what do we feel? Um, what do our constituents really want? What's really important to them? How do you prioritize? We all agreed and had passed on to Roger that we think part of one of the things that is wonderful about our sheriff's department, and I think, and it, it goes back to the previous sheriff, is that we have always had real entrepreneurs as our sheriff. And I think what 
most residents don't appreciate how many of the other projects that our sheriff does actually subsidizes all the benefits that we get. Um, and and, uh, and one of the things that we started talking about is what if when Roger decides to retire and a new sheriff comes in and he's not interested in doing all the things that Roger does, we would then as communities be in a real rock and a hard spot. So um, we're, we're kind of getting into some, into some very important but not easy to answer questions, which is, um, I, I think is, is good. And as I say, Walcott is looking at, um, you know, does, uh, does Hardwick and, you know, Hard, Hardwick just lost a gigantic chunk of money to Greensboro. And um, I doubt if Walcott wants to pick up that kind of expense. But, but again, just their concerns. And of course, Roger, who is always good, is working with the communities and answering questions. Um, so there, there isn't any, we have figured out that we need to help get the retirement thing figured out because that's sort of key to the whole sustainability. Because I, I and, and Roger sees, he, he knows that he loses good people. And no, I don't think anybody going into law enforcement these days thinks they're gonna work 30 years. I mean, you know, it's just, you're not, yeah, yeah, you know, it's just not going to happen. And while he has certainly lost some people because of retirement and you get Morrisville hires them, Stowe hires them, the state police hire them, um, I believe, and, and Roger thinks too, and he knows when he's looking for folks, that if we get the retirement, it, it, the door will swing the other way. There are plenty of, there are definitely folks around that the retirement issue gets settled that would like to come work with Roger and, and, and in his department. So, so we just, we'll just keep plugging away at it. That's the only thing you can do. Um, the excavator. <laughs> okay, Brian. Yes, <clears throat> we should have some sealed bids somewhere. We do, I, I, I have a question first. Yep. Yeah. I th and I assume all this happened that it, at the last meeting, you and Mark and maybe Ron were going to come up with a, you know, a spec sheet on here's here's what we want in the excavator, so that when this, I didn't think it was going out to bid this soon, but I, I it's okay, but are these bids all on the same equipment? I mean, is everything the same? Well, you know, even different manufacturers. I know they're different manufacturers, but it, are, are the specs the same? Once you see the bids, we'll know. But uh, when I put out the, the bid form, yeah, it was the thing. That Mark it was, and, yeah, and that's uh, what I'm just asking. Two right. constituents that uh, were there to give advice. Uh, that's what I did. We came up with the right, okay. And then uh, that's what went out. That's oh, gotcha. We went out on the that, that's just all I was asking. Yeah. Was, yeah. 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 Because yeah. I didn't, because uh, so, we were sort of, we, we you are ahead of us, which is not necessarily bad. <laughs> You well, know. I try to keep things moving, as you know. Yeah, yeah. And, no. uh, and being stagnant is not me. And the mosquitoes so, uh, grow on you if you let that happen. Right. Right? That's right. So, uh, anyways. <laughs> okay. Uh, and okay. then, and then, uh, uh, so, anyways, those are some. So we, we got. Yeah, we had the six that came in haphazardly. A couple of emails. Of, yeah. Something else dropped off here. So there's no. There was no RFP or bid per se. It was quotes that people eventually got to the town office or to you or something, you know, whatever. So we just collected all that information and you have six different vehicles or pieces of equipment to choose from. I haven't gone through them for warranty or maintenance issues and those kind of things. So we don't know the total cost. You want to do a life cycle cost on these machines. Mm -hmm. So sort of an upside down evaluation where we have to take the submittals and then try to mix them to match them for what you want two of them are used for example four are new so i don't i don't know if the, if the when the bid went out it said uh, new or used and i believe oh, that's okay. what the board had said they wanted to price both yeah and so there should be one of each uh, uh on there the new them. and the and the used yeah the folks that had them right oh, okay yeah. yeah not everybody did that so it's kind of like a, you might not have them they yeah. might not have them. One, one used vehicle was available for like two weeks and then they weren't going to guarantee it anymore. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah. that's, that one's probably gone already. So yeah. I don't, 
like I said, I, I don't know exactly how you want to proceed from here. You can you can take the quotes as they're submitted and have somebody go through them and compare those things. We got some financing information. We'll have to ask for financing from some other people. You could you know, not look at the quote if they didn't respond to what Brian asked for. For example, somebody didn't give a used option, that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> so it's kind of it's it's raw information at at the current stand. Did we decide to try something out? Like, are we willing to have us try it out, or we didn't? That we didn't require. We wanted to do. We didn't require that. So when we when I talked to them, we talked about that we'd have to have them um, um, try to put them side by side so they can work with them and oh, okay. and operate them and stuff like that. That was something that was discussed, but it wasn't on the. I don't think it was on the bid sheet. I have to okay, go yeah, all yeah. the yeah. Well, side by side. Well, usually, usually the normal process would be you you spec out your machine and try to get everybody to get close to it, right. and then you pick maybe two to try. We have six. Right. We have six to try. So Based on the price, yeah, you, know, you go for the lowest price if you want. Narrow it down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean the, yeah. the way the policy works, you're not supposed to bid to a machine manufacturer. You're supposed to bid, you know, bid towards your pipe. That's what Brian did. He yeah. had a list of ten or twelve things that everybody was right. supposed Just to get close to. Sure. And you know, if you once you start to put that in the matrix and you say that person did not meet our minimum horsepower, then you still have to make a decision whether you want to accept it or not. Yeah. So it's not. I mean, it's really not. Another thing that I discovered during the process is that uh, I believe there's a division within the board. Um, so what was I thought was established during our last meeting has transitioned um, from that. And so I just kind of pulled the plug on it uh, last week or whatever like that when I started hearing from different board members uh, issues around the uh, uh, where they wanted to go with it. So I figured there's no sense of putting any more energy into it if we're not consistent on what we want. And unfortunately, some of these uh, um, companies have put long hours into getting these bids out and stuff to us and that type of thing. And we should have had uh, um, some sort of a resolve, I guess, in what we were looking for, what we wanted, and I thought we did. And I thought it was going to be based on what uh, um, the people uh, that we talked to were going to uh, uh, suggest would be the best one for the town. And that was Joey Lowell, and I can't remember the other gentleman's name, and uh, Mark, and and uh, our own crew were involved with it in trying to figure out what uh, what would, would meet uh, the needs of the town and stuff like that. And then, of course, some of the board members have talked about uh, uh, what they um, what they thought would be the appropriate size machine for loading our trucks and stuff like that, what our trucks can haul. I can I can safely say in this one I'm innocent. Well, you sort of sounded like there isn't, so I don't I don't what know size, where the disagreement what is. What size machine did you go with? Yeah, yeah. Pounds yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was on the on the bid sheet. We said right. between twenty eight and thirty two. Oh, I think that's the same. So so well, that's why I think we talked about that last night. Yeah. And I'd like to bring that up. I, I was going to go back and see if I could find it on YouTube, bring up the exact discussion, and then I was going to copy that and bring it to the meeting so we can go back over the exact words that were discussed back then. But I didn't have the time to. Brian, you could do that. You could do that. I know I, I could do it. I know I didn't put it in the minutes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The, the discussion was we have a meeting June 7th. Let Brian and Mark go out and try to nail down the spec based on the preliminary discussion the board had. Right. Yeah. So. The, the jumping forward to a quote is fine. I just don't know what to do with those six numbers. So we can we can put them into a matrix and see if it sugars out to anything that the board's happy with. I'm just saying we'll have to go back out to some of those folks because they didn't check all the boxes. So before the matrix we are talking about, we need to discuss as a board if we're even going to move forward. No, for sure, yeah. So the, we have the price. And that's why I stopped and slowed down because well, I was getting right. these inconsistencies yeah. coming right. in right. to me, and I wasn't going to. Uh, well, the way I'm getting more uh, energy on the whole thing until we. Uh, what I understood, we were going to go ahead on the excavator and figure out the extra man for this year until we put it in budget. Right, but I'm trying I, to I agree, right, that we were figuring out the excavator. I think Brian, being enthusiastic, took a jump that some of us weren't 
anticipating. Doesn't doesn't mean that you know that it was bad or what we agreed on. Again, I, th I think what we what we had agreed on was that you guys would work and come back with the specs, and then we'd look at that and say, well, okay, and that and that's where. So who? No, I thought I was under the impression they were going to replace it. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I thought that's what we decided at the last meeting. The specs. That's what we I told them. We agreed that he was going to do it, and yeah, working with Mark, right? And we didn't with the specs. We right? trusted what they were going to come up with. Yeah, and everything. Yeah. That's right. That's what I said. You don't need me, you don't need Dave. Right, and you definitely didn't need me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, no, I think you did exactly what we decided. Yeah. And then, it, I mean. I'm just curious what the boundaries are, because I wasn't sure what you guys came up with. But. Right, right. I haven't looked at the specs, right? Because no. I'm not bidding on it. <laughs> I don't have any excavators. So, yeah, it was um, also an email that was sent to me um i'm trying to pull it up here so i can find it and uh, there's one salesman that um called the board some names and it was supposed to be addressed to somebody else and it came to me and they compared us to another town and uh and if i can find that information and i've done some research and I found the owner of the company up in uh, Maine, and I uh, have yet to talk to him in, on the phone to address this uh, person's. Uh, You're telling me it wasn't a favorable <laughs> comparison. Oh, I gladly put it on public <laughs> record too, just so that people can see it. But I can't well, seem to find it right now, and it might mean, not be of the, best interest to the town. One of the either. sales people said that compared us to a town. What you said. I'm sorry. One of the sales people compared us to another town. Yeah, yeah. and called us a name in comparisons uh, because of uh, um, they, what we were looking for in information. Oh. And, I, and I'd like to, if I could find it, I'd, uh, I'd bring well, it up to you. But, uh, well, I'm not going to worry, you know. <laughs> they say, okay, think about that. All right. Yeah. Um, so now we have this much information. What do we want to do next? And there's the giant unanswered of how are we going to pay for this? <clears throat> That's a very good question. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, uh, the quotes we got back just for people listening is a range from 153,000 to 193,000. So 153 to 193. Uh, but, the ages range from 2018 model to a 2021 model. Uh, case John Deere submitted uh, just new. Uh, Kamatsu and Volvo submitted one used, one new. That's, that's yeah, three three of the. So how, how many hours does the 2020 Volvo have? Well, these are the, this is we have looked at the slippery slide. slope. So when you're talking about used, we would have that information on this spreadsheet so you can see all the right. information because you'll have a hundred questions trying to get these tuned up to whether you want to go use or no. If you want it to you know, look at so I don't know how where you go from here. It's you're also looking at another twenty thousand dollars for trails. So yeah well that doesn't matter what we buy we're looking at the at the trailer so yeah, but it depends if you're looking at a twelve thousand dollar trailer or a twenty four thousand dollar trailer. And another thing to look at, and Why I can't. Is, it, is Rolly there? I can't quite yeah. see. Okay, because when you get your CDL license, as I understand it, probably Chassis knows this also. You you get a Class B, which I think our license has got. Now to tow a trailer, you, you're going to have to get a Class A endorsement on that. My and partner. I don't. I know Mark does because he drove for Squawk Valley and he drove his own trailer. Ah, okay. Okay. But we we got to make sure the other guy's got a trailer endorsement on it. Because, you know, according to what I've heard in the last four or five select board meetings, we can't count on Mark. Because he's going to be running the roads. 
or he needs to be running the roads when somebody calls. It takes anywhere in this town, it only takes about an hour and 15 minutes to run that excavator in. <laughs> What's that? I said it would only take about an hour and 15 minutes to run that excavator anywhere in this town that it would have to go and it would be dropped off and then either drop the trailer off or bring the trailer right to the road. An hour and 15 minutes. Okay, hour and 15 minutes. So if I brought it back, that's two hours and uh, 30 minutes a day. So that's one quarter of a day. Just leave it, leave it there. Everybody leaves their excavators wherever they get done with it, or the next day they continue on. They don't bring it back every day. Hmm. It's like a whole lot of yeah, I was gonna say, you see what happened one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not something easy to steal. Yeah. So, so let me. What do we need to do with the information we have? So, and I guess Ron, it's like we just need to get it into a spreadsheet. Yeah, what do you put? Like, all I want to know on use how many hours on the meter? You know, those are things. Is there any warranty with them? Second, so I kind of. Six hundred hours. Well, they have, they, there's there's warranty and there's maintenance. So some of these submittals went into great detail about every five hundred hours what the cost of that maintenance is, oh. so that you can see the first three years and which machine is going to be heavy on the maintenance requirements because now you have to do those to carry, keep your warranty up. Yeah. Yep. And that may be a big difference depending on the machine. And then the other one is the, you know, brand new vehicle. What do you want a warranty on a 15 or 20 year piece of equipment when they're only going to offer five or 10 years? I don't even know if they go past seven years on something right. like that. So those can add thousands of dollars. So that was a bit cheap. Yeah. You want that? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> the glasses, right. Um, so Ron, should you and Brian work and come up with the spreadsheet and with Allison? Okay. Okay. Is there okay. anything else you think should be added to that? I mean, before we go that far, we want to make sure we get all the information that we need. Right, right. And then Allison can now have that. Tell us about the money. Right. Brian, did anyone not send a bid? Like, did you put it out to all sorts of people? And is there certain people that didn't? Because, like, at time. Everybody that I put it out to uh, responded. Oh, okay. Yeah. Chat. Yeah, is, I think, is there a bid for from CAT? No. So maybe they didn't give you one. I'll have to look again in, in there. Okay. Um, would you would you like us to jump the knots, Mary? So after excavators, you don't have to deal with that anymore. Okay. All right. We'll just, you know. <laughs> Um, I'd like to see you guys travel. It wouldn't matter. I wouldn't travel as long as it was me. Because okay. <laughs> I'd buy it and that would be it. Which <laughs> one? Both. Oh, no one. Me too. Okay. That's, 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 that's. Well, cheap. depending on how, what way to do it. The Volvo. I'm reading well, the Well, you Volvo. said it's between 28 and 35. What was the new Volvo? The weight. We'll have to look at the bid price. Right. 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 You're gonna ask that the simple question, so I can pull it. Can out. we not skip me? Oh, oh, let's skip me. Who knows? John Deere's meant to call the shame they don't need so apparently. Well, it's interesting that those those three, I mean how Close to those three are. Those are that must be about the you know. Uh, what was the question on the new Volvo? The size. <laughs> what do we go between 28 and 32, 35? 35 is what I had on here. <laughs> exactly. Because we have put it off here, we started with that new plastic of bike models. If you and I want to buy it, it would be $64,000. See, I think they had their own drawers. They do. Yeah, they're the last kind of that. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes, this is all municipal account, yes. right? Yeah. Yes, I would say. I'm going to ask the question. Yeah. John Deere, wow. That's some, got some gold in it. You can see why nothing runs like a deer. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd Dave go? Okay, let's. Brian, right, the 21st. Brian and Dave, right. why don't you see if you can get this sorted out, if you can ship it to us all so we can see it beforehand. Three weeks. And, and we'll decide when we'll decide how we're going to pay for it, too. Hey, so. Yeah. You know, I, I agree with everybody is saying they've got to get the bids out and stuff. But what, what, what I am hearing is the argument is the size of the machine. We've got to do our homework and find out what we want that machine. What, what do we need it to do? We, we don't need to buy a, a uh, uh, 160. If all we're going to do is clean ditches, but we don't need to buy a 60 if we're going to use it to build roads. No, nobody has has come forward with a with a, a plan, for lack of better words, of what different jobs that they they would do with that excavator. And another thing that bothers me the most is. Anybody can hop in one. Or most people can hop in one and make the thing go up and down, swing it left, swing it right. But that don't mean that they're a proficient operator. Uh, you know, you, you know, I ripped my hunting pants at deer camp and I sewed a patch on them, but that don't mean seems make me a seamstress. You know, and I don't want to get into the same boat that we did, that we were in before, that. We only had one person that can really operate a big piece of equipment proficiently because you can't put a man on a grader and a man inspecting being on an excavator or the backhoe at the same time. So I, I, I think part of part of what comes with an investment in a piece of equipment like that is is um, getting getting the folks up to uh, which, which is oh happened with the grader in the pit. They actually went up and trained on it. Oh my. <laughs> um, and they're, and they're going to come back out and take folks out on the road with them, with them next. Um, but to get the proper training for folks when you, when you invest in a, in a new piece of equipment, particularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Equipment. How is that training program going anyways? What was that? How is the training program going anyways? Well, this, the, um, who's, who's this, who's the state guy? Mm -hmm. Stu, right. Stu was, uh, it was probably now a couple of weeks ago. They were, uh, up, took the grader up to the pit and they worked with it up in the pit to begin to not Jason's skills, but Mark as well, um, working on it up there. Um, developing it there, and Stu's going to come back, and they're going to go out and do some road work. Good. So I'd say, you know, we get an excavator, we do the same thing with an excavator. And, and again, they're probably, besides Stu, they're the state person, but there are probably some local folks around who are, you know, really proficient that we could come up and see if they could do some training as well. Same well I, I asked that question to my Yes, they have experience, but once you've got it, you know, I, a, an ongoing issue has been how do we get folks cross trained so that oh, you right. don't just have one person that can yes. do it and then you tie it up. So then what happens with that one person is sick 
particularly this past year, here you are with COVID, so somebody could be out for three weeks. Um, somebody leaves, you know, not trying to get, and with such a small crew, to get folks cross-trained. And part of that, part of the only way you can do that is you have to, you got to let folks take the time to work on it. You know, so that means with the, it, it's the it's the conflict, I think, that Mark and the crew feel with that there's always so much work to be done in the good season that taking, you take your most efficient person and you always put them in that piece of equipment because you want to get the most done. So you don't let the other people get the road time to be able to get better. So it, it's a, uh, it's been an ongoing stress and strain pull between, you know, trying trying to get folks trained. So having Stu, the state guy, finally actually get out here and get them up in the pit was a big step forward. Oh. It's only taken four years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you need to be into this one for the long view, right, Roly? <laughs> um, okay. Do you guys mind if I say a few words? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My name's yeah. Um, from Anderson Equipment. So I'm from East Montpelier selling Komatsus. And uh, Brian invited me on to, to watch and listen. I started in October last year. So I come from a farming background and a little sales background. And I ended up working for selling construction equipment. So I'm a little new to this. So I'm learning everything I can. So I want to jump on and listen to what you guys talk about. and. Um, I, I wanted to pitch, <clears throat> I wanted to throw in that the used Komatsu that I submitted, uh, got sold at two o'clock today. Oh. <laughs> that deal could fall through. It's Mark sold. So no, no one can do anything with it. Um, it could fall through and it could become available. So I would, I would say, don't pull it off the table yet, even if you are interested. So. Um, that if it does come available, you could be first in line. Um, but I will be looking for another one because that's a very popular model because of the size and what you can do with it. And it's great for roadways. It has the right road liner tracks on it that are good for pavement roads rather than a steel track, which is going to rip up your, your pavement roads. So um, if you guys had any questions i have the new bid that i sent in to you guys i'm open to any questions um one of the things is, comes to training it the komatsu is very simple simple machine to run even though when you do get into this big screen it gets it might scare you but we can train you how to get through that screen and if there's any codes we can look up that code and what it means we can actually um figure out exactly what's wrong with the machine by talking to the operator and then we, if it needed parts or whatever, we can drive out with those parts. So we know what's wrong with it before we get there a lot of times. Huh. But um, as far as training, we can come out and train whoever we need to. It takes two, three times. That we'll, we'll um, definitely, you know, you can take my word for it. I will come out and do that for you. But if you had any yeah. questions, you guys are still talking about it and deciding. But I'm here if you had anything you want. Ask me. That was a 2018 you had. Correct. 700 hours. What would be the warranty on that? Oh. Yeah. Well, I just wondered if it, if it wasn't sold, what would have been the warranty? Would have been any warranty on secondhand stuff would for you guys? It depends on how many hours. What year? Of course, I'm trying to pull it up on my screen, and my screen is froze now. So. <laughs> of course. <laughs> But is that the one that was down there in the yard? Um, there was one on the bank, and then there was one up there in the yard. One on the bank was a 78, so it would be a 17,000 pound. The, the, the PC 138, I believe, is right at 30. Okay, now we're getting in here. Yeah, so we we decided we we uh, let you guys demo that for a, a two day demo. Okay, so extended warranty, I didn't include it, but I gave you pricing on it. 
and I gave you municipal pricing on extended warranty. So that would be like a 2000 hour, two year powertrain, or you could do powertrain and hydraulic. Those two options were in that quote. So no, there's no warranty on it right now because it's past the warranty date. Okay. That's a 2018 and we're three years out, so that warranty ran out. Okay. So I don't want to know. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any questions, Jude? Okay. Yeah. No. Dave. Uh, no, no, no. All set. Just want to see what the specs are. Okay. Okay, so you guys will work up something, get us to us. Yeah, I, think, I, I think having those up top and center, yeah, that there's going to be a lot of variables because manufacturers do things differently. But right. if you have the, you know, the age and the warranty and the financing thing answered, plus the 28, 30,000 pound yeah. range, it's right. yeah. not a big deal if it goes up or down by a few thousand. Right. Uh, I don't, the wild card is the, what, what James just said, which is, Put a put an operator in there when you get to like an offer type level, but not make a commitment so that we have to have that kind of commitment where they say, Yeah, you can come operate it if you totally hate it for some reason. Because some, yeah, setups, might, are, sure, some sure. setups are just not, yeah, if you just don't like it, yep, no, people anyway, just don't so like it, yep. And I think everybody offered that, at least I saw a few of them. So, okay, okay, so we'll, um. We'll get that information and then we'll be able on the 21st to yeah. decide what we're doing and we'll have some brilliant options for financing it. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking about the amount of time we spend at the basement over a penny. It's like we're going, okay. Um, the personnel policy. Okay. That's just a really quick update. That is, just you guys say, are... Yeah, just a quick update. Say no. Search notes. Yeah, so we, we have notes, and I just want to make sure anybody else didn't have any other topics to add to the to our research as we do the strike version. So Chastity and I will keep working on that. Okay, and great. If you have anything, I uh, just want to let you know that sort of it's easier to do it from the beginning with the strike version. Right, than then, then coming in after. Right. Not that it can't yeah. happen. Okay, great. Send those Thank along you. if you have any as soon as okay. you can. Thank you for doing it. Okay, mowing in meadows. Hi. There's our, there's our, our mowing meadows. Okay. Well, um, actually, Denise is, but um, she had a family emergency, so I'm sitting in. Okay. Um, do you want to <laughs> well, I can, this is, I can, uh, the select board approved three programs for the energy committee. So they've been out meeting with people in other towns and preparing events and all that kind of stuff. And we hadn't had an update from them. Um, so that's, that's the meadows and pollinators issue, which uh, Denise is a uh, master gardener, I think, to help with those kind of things. So. Uh, I don't know if Elisa has any update on where, since the select board approved the three programs, what have you, what have you gone ahead and done since then? Um, well, we've been pretty active in getting people to um, participate in the raise the blade campaign, which is to get um, people to commit to mowing at three inches. And we've talked to a lot of the, um, people that mow around um, town and, and that, that's been going well. Um, what, what happened, um, something got mowed. Did, I, I saw it on front porch forum today that there was a, the town office has a hay field. What, what was that? What hay field are they talking about was mowed? What, it, what, what they were discussing was that uh, there was uh, one person in the town who was, or, maybe several people that were in the town, they were upset that the, the lawn around the town office here hadn't been mowed. And they referred to that as a hay field. 
Oh. And, uh, because they were accustomed to seeing it groomed uh, nicely every year and they hadn't, didn't see it. And I got a phone call and I talked to uh, this one person and the person uh, was upset about it. He said, do you mind if I pay or if I mow it, he said, that was his words. And I said, you can mow it if you want, I said. And uh, I said, but we were going to address the mowing uh, part of it. Uh, I said that the work crew usually does it, but we haven't had a, um, one, the work crew isn't up and running, and two, the, uh, um, uh, the contract hasn't been signed between the town and the Department of Corrections. And so we, uh, um, I uh, said, go ahead and, uh, and mow it. And because uh, in the past, uh, Roland Bovin and myself have uh, have tried to hay it or mow it, and it takes a lot of beating on our equipment, our personal uh, equipment, to cut the lawn back down to make it look good. And then we have a time factor of trying to get in and, and do it on our own spare time. So uh, I said to him, if you want to do it, do it. And apparently, I believe he hired uh, uh, <laughs> Kane cane plants uh, business to come in and, and mow it. And uh, it didn't look pretty good out there when I came in. Um, so they picked up all the debris that was around the trees looked like. It didn't look like it was mulch. And uh, um, so they've got that part done. You but mean they now, mowed they mowed the meadow with the wildflowers in the back? No, 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 no. no. Oh, OK, so, so I'm not heartbroken. OK. No, no. Just, just when you come in and, and lower down below and where you park. The lawn. I mean, they move the, the lawn. lawn. That's yeah. what I used yeah. for a word was lawn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's why I was really confused when they said the hay field. I was like, what are I they even know. talking about? Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, ideally, we would like to see that lawn mowed at three inches and not less. And then the, the meadow in the back on the hill with the wildflowers. Um, to not be mowed except, well, actually, I'm not the expert. I think she does expect once a year, maybe, but I'm not, I can't guarantee that. The um, there is, it, it doesn't get mowed at all. It doesn't it, get mowed at all. It's such, it certainly it's wouldn't be mowed right now when all the pollinators are, this is in critical po time to not mow. <laughs> um, it would be more of a fall activity if, if some maintenance was happening. Yeah, steep hill, and and we were looking at um, doing another grant because we did, and we did the wildflowers there. So figuring out how to do the wildflowers there, and in yes. talking about um, what has recently been mowed, so down this lower level, um, it's is, and again, thought with you guys, we see need to get together a little work group. But I think a long term plan for down here is like to get there's very little soil it's it's difficult to get all the fall off from the trees and everything i'm going you know maybe we we get some topsoil and do some not technically you know technically raised beds and do some plantings i could i could plant that entire area in hostas and i wouldn't even know someone had taken hostas from our property so yeah. but some kind of a plan you know that does in a shaded area that would that would in a few years really look nice out there um, mm -hmm. because it's, it's just under the best of circumstances it's an icky lawn <laughs> you know it's just it's so shaded and you know but to develop some kind of a plan for that part of it and then i think we have our own knotweed patch right Mary yeah knows about that. yeah yeah we have our own knotweed patch that we're cultivating um, <laughs> we have mary's here to talk about knotweed next so it's just okay um, yeah <laughs> Just again, trying to come up with a, with slowly but surely a variety of plans for, for the aesthetics of well of this building, but then down in the village as well. Um, yes, we've talked to the library trustees and we've talked to the rec committee um, about ways to improve the the grass without having to. Um, put a lot of chemical fertilizer on it so the the point being if if you were to in the areas where you can i realize in the infield of the ball field you you need it shorter but um if you can leave it at three inches or higher then you're 
improving the soil quality by leaving the clippings on it and the roots grow deeper and the water is absorbed better and the plant grows better and it it's just the plan and so we've been doing that with um, the county courthouse and everybody that we can get a hold of just to talk to brad carrier does the rec field he said he already does that he already mows it three inches nobody that we've talked to was opposed to it who's already mowing a lot of them already do that um brad, some of them didn't know about it but brock 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 so that's what we're doing. We're just basically trying to talk to all the contractors and 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 getting them to to raise the blade to three inches. Um, the other part of that was that we um, the third prong was the mo electric, and we were interested in. Um, I don't know what the legislation passed currently, but the um, the movement in the state is towards um, purchasing electric mowers. And I realize that the town doesn't owe any lawn own any lawn mowers. We we contract that service out. But um, if we were to be purchasing um, lawn tools or or chore tools, um, we would encourage the consideration of electric. It's definitely going to be required in the coming years from the state. The Department of BGS Buildings and Ground Services. Uh, um, they had something that came out and um, um, saying that uh, they would commit to buying uh, electric lawnmowers and weed whackers and blowers and stuff. And what it uh, said, if they could find something that was comparable to yeah. and would do the work, um, as long as it was electric. And so um, I haven't seen anybody use it, but again, they they do uh, a lot of the state owned properties are are done by the Vermont Department of Corrections. That and, and I really wouldn't be able to tell a, a cemetery to cut the grass to three inches versus having to cut down lower and keeping the stones uh, appropriate. Plus, you'd be throwing grass onto uh, granite, um, uh, you know, and it would stick to it, and then you'd have a terrible problem. That's why you keep your grass low. As you can when you're mowing so it doesn't spray up onto the gravestones and damage them or build moss up on them and other uh, in incidences so uh, um, anyways uh, and like I, I mentioned before um, usually in the spring of the year you lower your deck down and cut probably at a two inch uh, height something like that because the grass grows so fast now keep in mind when the grass is growing fast what is it doing sucking up moisture just what you're talking about and uh, we've never bagged any uh, uh, any grass we've always uh, let it go back onto the onto the ground and we get mulched in and uh, uh, but that can cause issues over time with uh, letting those roots go into the ground it forms a surface underneath the grass and it would impede your uh, your your mission if you you're asking for let the water you know conserve the water stuff it actually just builds a flat platform underneath it and doesn't allow the water to go through it and runs right off right well that's maybe uh, because the it's soil, being cut uh, short it, it, it need if it's cut short then the roots are are short the roots are you know about the same height as the grass right so you're trying to get deeper roots to have a, a deeper soil base I tend to disagree with uh, that theory about the grass blade versus the grass root base. Most of the time it spreads out to the side. It doesn't go straight down deep into the ground like any, any grass does. Um, and I've made a living out of this for 20 something years. Okay. So uh, um, I think I have a little powder. <laughs> but, but, but interesting, Brian, you're saying, cause Again, because you guys you don't you don't bag it, so so you do leave it. Yes. Have you yes. seen that develop an issue where it's yes where the water's pooling, if you will, or not? Uh, it probably I, eventually goes through, but it's going to slow its its. I'm struggling to find the name of what it's called. Yeah. But in the thatch, it's called thatch. Okay. Look that up, and okay. you'll, you'll see it's called thatch. 
and you have machines called defactors. If you want to do and make great. this a great project for yourself and for the environment, do defatching, which is basically you just you have machines that do it, and it's just like a rake. It goes over it and it takes that thatch out of it, allowing the, the water to go down into the soil and slow down the, uh, the process of it going uh, off of the property. So the thatch is what uh, it is. And there's some great, great videos on, on defatching and how it's done. And there's also a thing to be done where you, um, another machine that they use, it takes plugs out of your lawn. When you get done, it looks like you had a dog come in there and poop all over your lawn, but it's little plugs that get out of there. And that helps with the water going down into the ground, getting through this, uh, the thatch to, uh, to, to stay the water, keep the water in there to help the grass to grow. Yeah. You get a better looking lawn. And if you, if, like I said, if you have a chance, just go on to YouTube. And there's a tremendous amount of education there for anybody that's uh, in this, this process. It sounds good. I'll ask you after that question. Okay. Ron, was there anything else? Because I, I, I'm just kind of sitting in for Denise. No, I think uh, we want to talk to Denise about the front yard. If she had any ideas how to deal with that shaded area, which it gets plowed, plus it doesn't really grow grass really well. So we're trying to come up with a plan for the whole property. Okay. Uh, the, wild, the wildflower hillside, we need to rejuvenate. I think it's done its initial blossoming of two years. And okay. we should do something soon to get it to go again this year. Yeah. Like, needed her advice on those two things. Okay. We can do that. Okay. Thank, thanks for your time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Mary, the moment she's well, been waiting I, for. Oh, yeah. Is the plan to keep mowing the front lawn? Because let's be honest, that did look ridiculous. So, do we have a contract, and is it going to continue to get mowed? I think it, if the state DOC has their crew, we can, we can go with them. But if they don't have the crew, we'll have we need. Who plows the Who plows? Uh, plows. Who mows the cemetery? Spalding. Do they do the front office? Spalding yeah. maintenance does $22,000 a year of mowing for Hyde Park. So we can't just add the funds? We could spend the money on uh, like Pacassandra plants or something. <laughs> and you won't have to mow it ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, less, <laughs> less mowing is one of the concepts. It's hard to hard to get through to some folks. But right. The, right. the idea is that you look at the whole property and you come up with a plan and then you have your answer. What's left is mowed, and how does it get done? So if, if Brian's saying that you know the DOC is ready to go, we can do it. That normal annual contract for them, and as other plans are developed, then we take that away from the mowing. I know, but let's be honest, guys. Come on, the, it looked awful out here. It was embarrassing. So we need to make sure it's mowed regularly. The that's what we get. A that's what he's saying. That's right. No, but we don't have a contract. Well, so get, when, when is that going to happen? So what I wait for is silence, and then I interject. And so what's going on is we're waiting for the court to send us uh, offenders because of COVID, everything stopped. Right. And it takes a while to get them back up and running. And so once I get the sufficient amount, I don't want to enter into a contract that we can't abide by. And so uh, I'm waiting to hear uh, how many more people we're going to be getting. Right now I've got a, a crew, uh, maybe six people for a work crew that I used to have uh, 10 people a day and waiting uh, waiting period of, th of three months to get on. So I'm trying to build it back up right now. And once we have the sufficient amount of people, we can then enter into a contract and make sure it's mowed like we historically have always done and done a very good job. Of. Okay, that's great, but that could be October. You're absolutely right. So we need to have a plan. That's right, so what do we want we to do? We need to have this way to mow the damn lawn. I mean, I'm, this is really frustrating. It's such a simple thing. Why can't we just get a contractor to mow our lawn? Oh, I mean, we can, we can ask. So we, we would ask Spalding since they already have a contractor. Okay. I mean, if they can't do it for whatever reason, there's other commercial people out there. It's embarrassing that a taxpayer paid to mow our lawn. I mean, how much did we spend yeah. last year? Nothing, but they last year. Who did it? Yeah, right? yeah, we yeah. did. He and I mowed it last year. Right. We did. It. I mean, how much does it really cost? Okay, well, normally, how much do we spend? 
not much because VOC has been doing it for under a thousand dollars a year. A contractor is probably going to be uh, could be two or three thousand dollars depending on how much mowing they do. We have a thousand in the budget. The budget's a thousand. Well, it's been general. based on past years yeah. of, uh, of uh, contract general property maintenance. I think. Here is all. Oh, well, we the, just this one here, or does that include the, the other ones that we do? Yeah, yeah, this one. The miscellaneous one that Brian crew would do. Hello, it's Kim. Can I say something? Hi, Kim. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm just going to say, right. Okay. Right. Jump in there. Kim. Um, so I just wanted you to know that um, from the person who paid somebody to mow the lawn, um, they indicated that Robert Laird is willing to mow the lawn until whatever the state contract, gathering up a crew, whatever the issues are, he's willing to mow the lawn, I'm assuming, at a cost. The cost was not shared with me. Um, but Robert Laird is willing to mow the lawn until the state issues are resolved and the state can then take over doing what they do. So also having heard from this person who had somebody take care of the lawn, the guy who did it called back the taxpayer to ask, are they having problems with mice and with snakes? Because I mowed a lot of them. And in fact, yes, we have had mice in the building. Um, they've been in our desk drawers. Traps have been set. We've caught them on the traps. Um, we've had traps put in place by an exterminator type of business, inside and outside. Working in the building, I don't want to share my space with mice. So we haven't had any recently, and I think it's because of the traps. Um, but just wanted to put that out there. If that's gonna be a meadow, you're gonna attract all the pollinators and whatever, but you're also gonna attract the mice and the snakes. And the mice actually have come home in my car from the office because they're looking for places to go in the winter or you know whatever. Um, and that's not really a pleasant thing. So I just thought that I'd share that. I think I'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep on. Uh, Doing virtual meetings. <laughs> He's going to keep doing virtual <laughs> meetings. <laughs> You're, come on down and go after the mice. Let's go here. Um, so, anyway, it sounds as though the exterminator that it is working, um, <clears throat> which is the key for the, for the mice. Um, Arbor <laughs> It's um Ron, can can, can you check with this guy and see what he would charge the mo? Oh yeah, I got the name down in the minute. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right. So we'll just check and we'll get the what about Robert's uh, Right. We'll just we'll we'll, we'll get it sorted out. Well, that's right. And just come up with somebody that's willing to do it and you know, and hopefully Hopefully they'll start sending you some people and that program will get up and running for a whole bunch of reasons, not just our law. Yep. Okay. Now let's go to knots. Not me. Not me. Not me. Um so since I was here whenever that was a few weeks ago, um I had a great experience just really thinking about this, talking to a lot of people, going to not leave. Um and I think my initial thinking was, well, in general, I didn't want to see Hyde Park covered in Nazi. And now, everywhere I go, of course, that's all I see. Oh, you see. It's like prime season, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? It's prime season yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, so I thought the easy thing to start with would be to just get the low hanging fruit, the little small chunks of Nazi that you get them now before they become a big. So I just went through with these, started towards near my house. And um, and it's been fantastic because my neighbors have gotten all interested. I've got two women on my street who both work with me fully not me. 
And then we actually even have the Cooper Hill Road uh, female, Cooper Hill Road branch for not in Hyde Park with an email that we're circulating because we've talked with people like the Harley's been great because some of it's on their land and they've given us permission to do that. And then I've been over on Jones Road and dealt with Roland's been terrific because he's got a piece and Brian Jones gave me permission to pull some out and buy a culvert there and um, and, and on and on, just lots of interactions with people about mountain that have all been really terrific and pleasant. And um, the, the, the interesting thing about it is, even though you have this big stand, like one of them, one piece is maybe 50 feet long by 10 feet deep, right on the side of the road, that would just get mowed and, you know, risk spreading it a little bit. It took the three of us maybe an hour and a half, and there was a lot of, you know, pin wagging and chatting and stopping and drinking water to, to clear it. And now all we have to do is just go back every two or three weeks and pull the little bits that are there. And so anyway, there's a there's a plan there that I can see that you could you could spread that around. You could get people to use that. The things that are and there are issues with how you do that, which I won't get into because you have to make it easy for the people to do it. It's much more pleasant to do with one person or another, two or three other people. You're not, sure. you know, you're standing there in that knot with all by yourself, and think, you know. Um, but it goes very quickly, and that was great, great experience. Um, but I also realized that none of it makes any difference if we don't tackle bigger issues, like, for example, the fact that the garage is surrounded on three sides by not and if that stuff keeps coming up that is going to be a problem so um and some of the places along the road that are big some of the roads i've now seen they're they're really big big mountain, <laughs> which you know you can't just say don't mow them forever because there's slight issues and that sort of thing so there's some there are some complicated things there but um, with the exception of Garfield, I, I think there, the you know, at the reservoir, there are easy enough solutions or workable things we could come up with. So that's kind of exciting. Um, what else do I want to say? Ah, yeah. So another thing that's a big deal is making sure people know what mountain is because there are people who don't. And so, um, I've got a plan to do a little event on, at the end of June. I'm working with Ron, has been terrific and helpful. And um, Ken Brown, I think it is, who manages the rail trail, is going to meet me there and help set up what, what we want to try and do at one of the sites, the Black Farm Road site near the guardrail, and just get that done, make an event out of it to talk to people about not being on the trail, and blah, blah, blah. And I also thought we could make one out of a nice little event out of your two yep. patches here because you've got a nice flat space where you can pull it, put a drying stack there, you know, and have a sign that says this is what we're doing here. And you know, you, it, the manpower for doing that is not huge. You don't need an army of volunteers to pull that stuff. You just need three people and you'd be done in an hour. And then you'd have your little drying stack. And anyway, so I think that would be a great sort of educational outreach sort of thing. And um, uh, so think about whether you allow me to organize that because it would be good if you wouldn't have not be right there. Um, and there's more, but I mean, I, I don't know what you, what your. What have you been doing after you, like you mentioned about putting a drying stack out there. What do you do after that? Well, we didn't entirely clear. One of the biggest issues, I, I think, in an ideal situation, the way it's going to work, and this has been the experience of Keith from Warren, because um, I read Jeremy and hung out with the guy there, and he's done a lot of work on that, he's a terrific guy, is you just leave it there. If you've got a site, you just, it will eventually, not we takes quite a long time to compost and break down, but it dies, it'll die, it just won't turn into soil quickly. Um, so you could just leave it there for a couple of seasons, or let's say this is a, your patches here, let's say it's a three season project to get rid of it. You just keep adding by the, you know, next spring that pile will be small, you know, and it's a tidy pile. 
Yeah, Mercy. Oh, so she you, sent some pictures. You literally just put it in a pile. Well, in, in the in the uh, what? Like in the woods or whatever. The, no, you don't oh. want you don't want to contaminate okay. the site that you yeah, can't see. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So, okay. so the thing that um, we were trying up on uh, in the middle is what they were doing in Warren. You just put a piece of plastic or something on the ground, and there's four stakes here, okay. and that gives it form. And then you just lay the stuff this oh, okay. way, and then you wrap oh. it this way, and that way, and yeah. you end up with a you know a cubic yards of not leave material and we're watching it dry you now we're watching it die. Good. So you you bait you babysit it technically yeah, for yeah. you, you monitor okay. the soil. You definitely can do that. Oh, okay. And then in three weeks time you come back and pull and add more of the stack and interesting. And what happens if you burn it? It's a great idea. You but you're probably not going to burn it at each individual site. You could at the end of the season go collect it from your 15 sites and take it into a burn pile. You could do that. I mean oh. mm. It has a tremendous amount of yeah, moisture in it because, because of its rate growth, yeah. how fast it grows, it has a great amount of moisture. In it. So, as far as burning, you, you really have to have almost a burning system. You have to let it grow. Well, it'll no, no, it's after you dry it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Once it's, right. once it's dead, right. yeah. uh, put plastic over it, lets it dry, and then you set to the match to it. Say that again. Put plastic over it, black plastic over your pile. Oh, to make it, yeah. And then uh, once month dry or whatever when it's dry it's going to burn yeah you, you know how long you want it to sit there depends partly about the, the mass of material that you have and whether the manpower picking it all up from all your 15 different sites to take it and where you're going to take it to the burn pile i mean these are all things that uh need to be explored i wouldn't, and even, I wouldn't even move it when you get your files and well, files and you get yeah, where it is. yeah but get your fire department Get yeah. them in the yeah. Oh, take the pumper yeah. down there and yeah. stay there with the pumper and send the train in and burn stuff with the pumper there and then wet it down. Because once it's dry, then, yeah, once you've pulled it and you're drying it, it yeah. won't hopefully doesn't spread anymore. Oh yeah. Well, well I mean it will if I have the of it, right? The, it's the, back. the so important then, piece is to well, not let the root it's if you know, if you're pulling it and you're lucky, it's not a, it's not a super mature plant to pull you little just a crown of the root, really. That you don't want in contact with the soil because it could become just moist in a matter of 15 years. But gotcha. Um, and that's why we put plastic under it. But if it's a really infested site, it doesn't even matter if you put the plastic down. You just keep putting your drying sack in the middle of the site and you just keep adding to it. You pull from the side and it'll crop up and you pull it and then on. Yeah. So it's the, it's, it's, a decades long project. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's becoming, it's like green up day. It's uh, exactly what I was thinking of. That's so right. not the it just, then it's just something that you just do. Yeah. And as long as you're persistent, right, you have enough of the ants running around doing the thing that needs doing and keeping on top of it, you, you will, you will have success. Yeah. So, Anyway, that's um, what you're. I really think, Mary, and sort of analogous to Green Up Day, it really is. It I really mean, is, you look because yeah. we just don't, people don't even think about it. You know, it's a big family thing. Yeah. You know, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Do it. Okay. Okay. just sort of do it. Yeah. But yeah, but, yeah. same idea. Yeah. Same yeah. idea. Yeah. In the sense that what, the thing that's harder is doing the big cut, right? That takes a little work. And it's not hard, it just takes an hour. And then you get sweaty. And <laughs> yeah. But coming back in three weeks' time and pulling what's there, the, the, the quantity, well, I'm, we're only at the beginning of this, but the quantity of growth is much smaller. And it, it's, you know, it's fast. You just need to show up. That, yeah. That's the issue. Yeah. You need enough people to show up. Not, not at one site, but at different sites. Yeah. But the thing that isn't addressed is the big, gnarly, white. Right, the gigantic patches. More acre road. Yeah. yeah. There are solutions for that too, but they're not the subject of this meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Let's start small. We'll conquer the small ones first. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, think, many, I think it's uh, great. How many community members do you think you've made contact with for, under the program? I don't know, 15 to 20, but that's just. 
No, more than that, because there will be people I stop. I had this great experience the other day. It's a little tiny patch right near the garden farm. And I'm just driving around taking pictures of these patches because that has to go. It's so tiny. <laughs> now he lives across the road. I think his name is Ray. He just had a bird pile going, came up reviewing. I explained it. a great chat about invasives. He said, I'll take care of that for you. He went, pulled it, put it on his bird pile, <laughs> put it around it. That, yeah. that patch is gone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 And I bet you he will. Anyway, so there's just stuff like that all the time. Yeah. Good, good story. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, and I think it is the kind of thing you. you Again, if you're confronted with a gigantic patch and said, I have to fix it, people go, I can't, I don't bother me, you know, but you're right, little individual patches and, and you get into it, then you say, okay, let's, we are now ready, what's the plan for taking on a big patch, what do we have to do? Yeah, and there you start to wonder why you're following, this is where it will become interesting. Well, why? it's interesting because it's already being spread around here. You see the mower up here, around the belt? In the in the well, yeah, 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 right. They're, they're, they're in the roundabout. Well, not in the roundabout, but there is down here, and they'll be mowing down here. And the machine will get it and spread it up the road. And you're not you're talking about the road crew mowers. It's the it state. 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 It was the state. state. Yeah, but the mowers that they have the tractor and that's fine. Yeah, they, the mowing road work and everything. Yeah, when it means doing that. Bits and pieces of yeah, it, yeah. stick it to the water, drop the off down through, and it, yeah. and it just like that's a great all the way down through. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, the state mowers maybe don't care, but I don't know that the Mark certainly is really pretty well informed now about Maui. I'm not sure what his strategy is, but um, yeah, we don't, we don't, well, my dad will be mowing the roadsides probably, so I'll have a talk with him. Nice. So I can say that my dad usually mows the roadsides in my car, so I'll have a talk. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him a yeah, There was something I wanted to say. I forget what it was. Oh, there is an issue that would be helpful for you to think about, which is I continue to think the limitation on scaling these small things for people all around is that there's no place to take. Not every site can you have a drying stack because it's. Maybe right by a roadside, yeah. it's the thing, there's no place to put it. Um, yeah. So we have a couple of state officials on the North Knight Park thing waiting. Oh, okay. There's, oh, sorry. There's no, no, no. No, no, no. I can talk about not with all the <laughs> um, no, the, 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 You know, you can imagine just going to a site and you just want to pull some stuff out and put it in your thing and take it to. But not really yeah. dying site. It's right. an important issue that we need to figure to out. Create something like that. Yeah. Say local, right. not weed drying site. Yeah. What we're looking for is right. what the lead is. So. I think so. Yeah. And you, you still got my information, Mary? Yeah. yeah. Your yeah. 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 And so when that one that you talked about on the rail trail, uh, yeah. education, I, I'd like to State. attend that if it's oh, right. if it's in my yeah. Yeah. I'm still sort of working out what it looks like. You might be interested in meeting with the yeah, and if I'm available, I'll try to do it. I gotta, I gotta get rid of mine. Okay, okay. Thank you. okay man. great. Thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. And thank you, Ron, very much for being such a help. Yep. Well, thank you. <laughs> very good. Okay. Really All quick right. on swimming pools. Yeah. Oh, yeah. PLTT, our turf care says don't do it. It says don't do it. Again. Right. They did the same thing last three years. Right. The fire trucks going on. Yeah. yeah. My it's, it's, don't do it. I'll just put it in the minutes. So. Yeah. Waterbury does it if anybody wants to know. Yeah. So does Cambridge and so does Lowell and so does Hawkins. Yeah. Oh. Great. They can come you and can do it. Because yeah. 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 I don't like to do it. So yeah. takes takes one lawsuit and they'll un they'll you just have not do it. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's just jump to, to North High Park since we've got some some folks waiting, Ron. Yes, uh, Seth, are you on line? I am, yes. Seth. Hi, Seth. Hello, how are you all? Good, thank you for your patience. No problem at all. Um, I was actually running late at another meeting, so I was glad that <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it was actually worked out. Um, so, um, the reason uh, I'm here tonight is to talk to you about um, the, the planning going on in North Hyde Park. Um, 
the as you all know um the wastewater up there is a limitation to um uh, economic development, um, you know, growth of small businesses in the village, as well as, um, and maybe pushing this issue a little bit, the um, our use of the Grange. Um, a lot of those properties are built up uh, with the backyards along the um, Guyon uh, that limits what can happen. Um, and there there's what's called a planning advance through the Department of Environmental Conservation to um, look at possible solutions for that. Um, and uh, that can, um, you know, be, you know, like shared leach fields, um, a larger uh, community scale system. Um, there also are needs related to, or possible needs related to the uh, fire district water system that is up there. Um, and so when you're doing this kind of planning, uh, looking at both sets of infrastructure um, make, you know, at the same time, uh, can, can bring in a lot of economies of scale. Um, the planning advance, the way that works, and I'll let Lynette give more information about that um, in a little bit but um, is effectively an advance of money uh, to the town to do some initial feasibility work on what some solutions might be. Um, and there's no need for um, payback unless the town decides to build something. Um, and then the cost of the payback can be rolled into the 20 or 30 year uh, system cost um so so it's really low risk no risk if just if you you know if you um just to look at feasibility i'm not as familiar with the programs for uh water and i understand there is existing water with some potential upgrade maintenance needs um so i'll let celia talk more about uh those uh programs because i'm not as familiar with them Uh, yeah, we can we can fund um, we can fund planning, design, and construction on the for drinking water systems. Sort of, it's a, the companion or the partner funding source to the clean water SRF, which funds the wastewater um, pieces. And um, so we can fund you know any sort of improvements, any sort of preliminary engineering design, alternatives assessment. You know, depending upon what stage um, you're in with that fire district, the, uh, we can we can fund that loans. For planning the design, we can do on a rolling basis. There are five-year loans uh, with a five-year deferment in start of payment with 0% interest, 0% fee. Um, so really, you do have to pay them back, but they give you a, we give you a long period of time in which to, um, to continue to develop that project. And then if you were to construct using a loan from us, then we would combine that planning loan into your construction loan and issue a single schedule for repayment once the construction of that work was actually completed. Um, and I can go into to more detail if you have specific questions about the, you know, the type of work that might be needed or the um, specific issues that you may be hoping to address. So when it comes time and you have a, uh, we have a project that needs to be done and we borrow the money and you said you worked the the money into it does is, is there an interest put on to that at that time at the time of construction yes it depends the the we can offer um as low as zero percent and we won't go higher than two percent and we set that rate based on um a couple of things but we're looking basically at the the median household income of the community that, that's served by that system and trying to make sure that the post project user will not exceed 1% of that median household income. Um, and if you're below the statewide average for income, uh, then we have a couple tools in our uh, you know, quiver that we can use. Uh, one of which is to extend the loan term out. So a standard construction loan term would be 30 years, but we can go as high as 40 
if you're below that statewide average, we can reduce the interest rate to, to 0%. And we can we drop that down incrementally, again, trying to hit basically 1% of the household income as the post project user rate, with the idea that we can fund infrastructure that's affordable for communities. And if we still can't hit that rate, we actually have the ability to offer a subsidy, which is basically principal forgiveness. You can think of it as a grant. So even if you have a million dollar loan, we can offer a certain percentage. Um, and typically that's up to 50% of that loan as a uh, forgiven principal, uh, which comes right off the top before you ever start paying the loan back. Do, do we have um, any idea when the grants are sort of at what stage of the planning are we right now? Are we, are you right now with the, uh, with the grant? So um, something to keep in mind is even though, you know, water, wastewater are um, both underground and both serve kind of in out need. Um, the programs are actually separate in how the funding goes. So um, that is um, a more complex question on the surface than it seems. So um, in terms of the, the, the wastewater, um, where really we are is in the, the planning work that has happened in terms of land use planning and in terms of the revitalization planning um, the wastewater has been identified as a major uh, limitation um, based on sort of tabletop of, you know, looking at the soils maps, a few sites uh, um, that have favorable soils are near your village, which is actually uh, huge um, and, and positive. A lot of villages don't have that, um, but no engineering has been done um, because at the moment there is no um, funding for, uh, uh, no secured funding for um, engineering. So the, the planning advance would kind of pay for engineering to look at those different sites that the soil maps say could be favorable, confirm, you know, based, based on the ground what's there, uh, help you define what current and future needs for capacity might be. Um, and then give you some sense of cost so that you could think about um, whether this is something worth pursuing uh, for the town. Um, water is a little bit different because there's an existing uh, uh, fire district water system there. Um, so, you know, I am not entirely uh, familiar with the needs of, of that system, um, but my understanding is like many uh, rural water systems, um, it could benefit from, um, from, you know, upgrades and that, um, many times, uh, you know, there's, um, opportunities to add capacity to, to support new users and new development. Um, and all of that needs to be defined and explored. Um, but, um, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of beyond the uh, feasibility study phase of should there be uh, a water system here because th there is one. There may be more of a question of what is the appropriate management structure, what is the, you know, appropriate upgrades that might be needed or the goals for that um, uh, in terms of, of the town's goals. So if I, if I might actually jump in here, so something that might be of, you know, of, of interest is that under the current uh, proposed intended use plan, which is like our big plan for spending money for this next fiscal year, um, um, we are offering 100% um, principal forgiveness up to $100,000 for planning for water systems that do um, um, a hydraulic evaluation of the whole distribution network. So you know, if that's sort of the scale or the scope of what you're thinking of, for the, for the water system or with you know what the fire district is thinking of this could be a good opportunity to take advantage of that and then and um you know have that principal forgiveness applied which would mean you, you don't pay back 
Um, and we're offering up to 50% principal forgiveness for any other type of planning, a cap to get at $100,000. So it's start planning, regardless of what the stage is um, or you know, it is with the water system. And if you don't know, that's fine. That's what planning money is for also. Right. Okay. So where do we want to go? Well, I think this is just sort of really, this is just an right update here. of, yeah, yeah, this is just an update of, you know, coming up with and applying for the money and figuring out what is what is needed up there. Yeah, Seth, are you thinking two different parallel tracks uh, to deal with the two separate funding so that you might ask for the preliminary engineering sewer feasibility study as a planning advance for the sewer side and then for the water assessment, uh, that, that's, like you said, we, we're past that point, but I don't think they have a current assessment of their system. You know, it's sort of like they they built the system, they upgraded it in the early 80s, but I, I think they've just been sort of running the system without yeah. a lot of the planning and assessment and future planning and capital needs and all that fun stuff. So would, it, would that come from the fire district, though, directly, since they're the municipality operating the water district, not necessarily the town of Hyde Park. Oh, where'd Seth go? Oh, sorry. I, you know, I, I, I would say that there's, there's some economies of scale of evaluating these kinds of things um, in conjunction and it's, um, always nice where possible to plan your um, water in to match your water out, at least to some degree. <laughs> um, you have a, a example, several examples in and around your village, uh, your community of where that hasn't happened and it's, it creates <laughs> challenges. Um, but I, I would really probably de defer to Celia on the, who would be the applicant for the fire district. Um, Cause I'm not sure in the details of that. It, it would be the fire district, but um, these, the, the, the boundaries and the people are often overlapping. And so it would be good to be in close coordination with them. Um, and especially if the work you're undertaking for the sewer is, you know, through the town, but then the fire district is dealing with the water, like you need to have, you know, an open conversation. And if you're coordinating on services, you need to have some sort of written agreement about, you know, who's paying what or doing what. But we definitely, the programs can coordinate with each other, um, but in a case where the actual, the actual um, you know, entity that's taking on those costs is different, you would need to have, you know, some, some, some clear conversation and understanding between the fire district and the town. But you would, you would normally take it to a MOU or memorandum of agreement or something between the two and then designate all those details in the memo, right? Well, I should say, so for the for the water side, it will actually need to be the fire district that would be the borrower talking, you know, working with a single engineer to do some work, um, something of that sort. And it's not out of the question that you could be the town and the fire district could both be working with the same engineer, but you would need to work out on your own who's responsible for what and then coordinate with the two programs. So us, like what's sewer, what's water. Um, so it's a lot to it's a lot of pieces to keep kind of keep track of, but it's not it's not out of the question. You just need to like go into it with eyes open as to what you need to track. Okay. And I I believe. Oh. Okay. Yep. Oh oh, there was an echo when I heard myself talk, and I thought I was interrupting someone else. Um, the. The um, statute for the planning advances, I believe, was updated this year, um, where we could now assist with some of that coordination. Um, if that would be helpful to the um, the town, um, and of course we, you know, we could assist in in some ways, um, no matter what. But I think it may allow us to be more in depth with crafting those coordination between the town and the fire district and various engineers and such if, if that would be beneficial to the town. So the, pl the planning advance that you're talking about uh, would be a letter from the select board on the sewer feasibility piece for North Hyde Park? 
and really nothing for water except trying to get a meeting with the fire district to see how they see what they're feeling about all this. Likely. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, I think I think that's what sets you know the, the action item is a, right. is a is a letter from the town to the state asking for a planning advance for North High Park feasibility study funding. Yeah. Okay. And then have you and it's always connected with Roger, so I guess maybe you give Roger a call and yeah, talk with I'll him and with talk with them and see what where the district's at and if they're um interested in getting into something much bigger. I think in the 50 to 100 year planning mode. <laughs> I was gonna not, say yeah, yeah tomorrow. Like, which is, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're they're well, stuck with tomorrow right now. Right. Okay. We got it. So you so we'll need a motion to do a letter to ask for a planning grant. So moved. Okay, all right, Dave's there. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. okay. He's not in sight. He must be out right now. I'll put four, <laughs> four to zero with a question mark. Right, right, <laughs> right. Okay. There he um, is. There he is. Okay. You can ask him if you want to add to the vote. You there, Dave? Where He's unmuting himself. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Did you hear? We're uh, we're just sending a letter to the state looking for planning um, grant money for North Hyde Park. Got to start somewhere. So. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We got we got to start somewhere. We got to make sure that there's plenty of traffic so that we don't have to try to get rid of the building. Right. Do you have any interest in hearing more about the engineering planning advance program? I did prepare a slideshow if you're if you're very interested um, tonight, or we can um, we can wait and get into the details uh, later. Yeah. What what was we we yeah. lost you in and out? That was Lynette. Yeah. Or Lynette, can you repeat yourself? Yeah. Uh, we have a an, um, a prepared slideshow on the engineering planning advance program. If if you'd like to learn more about it, or if um, gotcha. you know, okay. we'll let we'll let Ron talk with the fire district first, so okay. we can figure out where they are, and then um, if they're interested in moving forward, uh, mm -hmm. we'll let you know and 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 set up something with them and take it from there. Okay, and then. Is the planning commission uh, the one taking up the wastewater study, or is that still the select board? Select board. It's a select board. Okay, great. Okay, we good. Yep. Okay. The only, uh, the only other, just a little, the little thing that I I put on there. Thank you, Seth. I think you yeah, did. yeah, that's right, Seth. And let, thank you very much. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Thank you. Um, I I thought it would be nice to send a letter of congratulations and thanks for the hard work to Sterling View and to Ken Harvey since they've plugged away for three years and gotten that transition and they now own it. Um, and that's that was a lot of time and energy and I know Ken was very um, helpful and then and we get, 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 get get the, yeah. yeah 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 so I just thought that. just sort of sending a, a letter to both parties thanking them for their hard work and glad it's all worked out what is the entity now that that uh, it's a non nonprofit right it's up there now yeah they're, well they're cooperative they're co -co okay yep yep, yep they're a co-op and um uh Paul Nesky is their oh, Paul. yeah yeah Paul is their point of contact, but they've got a governing board and okay. they um this the sale was uh, they stayed away from April first they went to April second <laughs> but they but they have uh, said that Paul and I have talked and sort of once everything is more open 
they want to do a nice open house and do a nice celebration. So I said, when they when they were getting around to doing that, let us know, and we we'd certainly see if we could help. Because that's a, definitely that's a nice to have that now permanently settled and being part of our community. Yeah, and well, and it's an it's an important part of housing in this in this region, not just in Hyde Park. But and in they're this, using a really region. great property service on Anna Burlington, so it's getting that kind of on. She was their first interview that the board had to use was for my aunt. Oh, okay. So I was, we were like their guinea pig. Okay. And it went very smoothly. All right. So they did a great job. And they did a complimentary thing about how they the checks and everything was doing very yeah. well. So it started off with a, with a connection. There you go. That's that's right. Yeah. That's, um, they were great to work with. All the people over there. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's a deal with Paul. It's a, it's a big <laughs> yeah yeah no as you say, all the people the yeah there you go that's <laughs> that's right well i'll figure that one out a long yeah. time ago um let's see do we have anything else right okay that's right well they, they, we do a public it's just a quick update that the board needs to set a date to meet with them the next time uh okay the union sent the draft pay scales Oh, so I need to okay. get those to you, but I was trying to focus on the next meeting. Right. Okay. All right. I don't know if you want to do the another before your twenty first. That's the sort of the last time so we can meet after they get out of work and before your meeting. You want to set up so you can liaison the meetings. I don't. I don't know how you want to go for it. So it's just to exchange. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get get from them what the. Well, I'll, I'll give you what they get. Then you can look okay. at it and then you meet with them and give them feedback on that. Okay. Plus, any other issues on there that right. the, the, the we, we need to talk about. Right. Yeah. right, right. We'll need to talk about that before. So, you've got it. So, we need to set a meeting for the four of us. Oh. No, she can't. Yeah. Oh, she can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I can't. <laughs> She's doing the personnel policy. Right. <laughs> Good trade off, okay. right? <laughs> right. Um, let's see. So, when's a, when's a, why not? So, if you're going to send them out, so we're going to review them and then uh, give us at least three, four days, and then uh, we'll set up a time that we can for us to talk. Yeah. 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 For us to talk before the 21st, because that's, and and then once we talk, we need to set a time to meet Monday, with them again. Monday at five. PC meets at six. You want to do the fourteenth? No, you're yeah, pretty busy, be, busy rolling. Do you have fourteenth? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, five o'clock. Yeah. yeah. I heard fourteen, but yeah, five. I can do, I can do you, five o'clock. Okay. Get, that's your earliest time, right? I get, well, I get done at four thirty. Ten to two minutes early. <laughs> okay. Unless he's staring at his lawn. The 14th at 5. <laughs> and we'll go over a yeah. I am. I'm being bad. Uh, 14th at 5. Okay. Okay. We can meet here. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Super. Anything else? All Sign set? Up at 5. No, we're this that's where we are today. Today. That's where we are today. I mean, 14th. 14th. Yeah. 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 14th can you need to put it in there for you? No, I can. Mean, <laughs> 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 I gotta get it straight to okay. the middle. Yeah, 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 that's our, yes, I know that problem. Okay, I guess motion to adjourn. So move. <laughs> Second. Okay. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye. Long day, day. I, 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 yeah, I know it. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.